Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Tacos and Tunes vlog. We are officially back in Dallas and look who we found. Hey, it's Thomas. Last week, all of us were out of town except for Thomas and I think that he might have been a little butthurt about that, but we're back. Three Thomas. Night, <laughs> so good. Did you miss us, buddy? I missed you guys. I'm glad you're back. We have a killer weekend planned. We've got some shows, we've got some tacos, we've got some hangs. We're taking you with us for all of it, but before any of that, we're headed to the Texas studio. They're a local photography studio uh, and they are one of our hosts for an upcoming show. So we want to introduce you to their team, show you their space. It's going to be a blast. Thomas, will you do the honors? Roll that bumper. here for just one second. I just realized here we were at this amazing venue talking to Doug and Kelsey about all the cool things that they're doing in and for the community, why the Texas studio exists. We heard their heart, we heard their passion, and I got none of it on camera. So right now, Brian, wherever you are, taking care of your kids and hanging out at the house, just know, man, you are missed and your cinematic prowess uh, will be missing from this week's vlog. I do, however, just want to talk about these two for one second. Man, everything behind the reason they started the Texas studio and the way they want to use it to better the creative community in this city is a hundred percent what Tacos and Tunes is about. It's the foundation that we built this on collaboration over competition. And so when we can collaborate with two people like this, it's better for everyone. The truth is, in the past when I've said things like, I'm not a hundred percent sure where this vlog is going, but we're figuring it out, I kind of do have an idea for where we're going. At the end of the day, Tacos and Tunes is about a lot more than one live music experience. It's about influencing and investing in the creative community in Dallas. While I can't tell Kelsey and Doug's story in full this week, we do want to tell their story and more like theirs in the future. And hopefully through that kind of storytelling and collaboration, you'll begin to see more of the heart of Tacos and Tunes and honestly the ultimate vision of where we want to go with this. So with that, I'm going to send it back to past Dave. Try not to hold it against him that he didn't get the footage that we needed the first time around. It led to this lovely little chat that we're having now. Oh, you're still checking for that post. How about you put the money where your mouth is? I'm not buying over that you said Pretending like this never ended This is what the real world is, no She's got no So our awesome future hosts here at the Texas Studio suggested an awesome local taco joint that we need to go check out, El Padrino And we happen to always be in the mood for tacos, so let's do it actually headed to the Dallas Majestic Theater tonight to see Charlie Crockett and David Ramirez play. Both of them are Texas boys. Charlie actually grew up here in Dallas, and so we're gonna go catch the show with some friends. Let's do it. Wait, are you wearing that? Yeah. I feel like you can make some more effort. Better? Awesome. <laughs> the show here with John Camacho. John or Jonathan? I don't care. You can... We're gonna do that again apparently. Yeah. I don't have to do it again. No, we're gonna do it again. All right, let's do that again. Yeah. Alright guys, we are outside before the show here with Jonathan Camacho. John is a local musician and producer. He's been a part of Emmy Award winning productions and done the score for those. His wife, Shannon, is... Hello, Hello Shannon, Shannon. Another local Dallas artist who has music coming out very, very, very soon. I'm out here talking with John because uh, Charlie Crockett, there's no marquee, but if there were, his name would be on this. He's a local Dallas artist who's just blown up. He's playing the Majestic Theater tonight. He's been all over the place. Yep. The name of this vlog is how do you book, how to book a show at the Majestic Theater. Booking your show at the Majestic Theater. Uh, 
how to play the Dallas Majestic Theater. I haven't named it yet. It's gonna be one of those. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask John, man, what is it about Charlie? You used to run with this guy back in the day, y'all were playing shows together. Dude, like, why is he here and we're out here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I texted him to like to see if he could get me inside. Bro, you need an opener. Uh, I've actually known Charlie since high school. He actually posted something yesterday or today and he said that there's a lot of stories that a lot of you have heard about me that you don't think are real and he's like honestly I'm toning it down for you because there's so many more stories about me that are real. All of those stories are real and I know because I lived it with him. And the thing with Charlie is honestly he just played. He worked, he played. Um, and he lived life and he had something to say. He played New York, he played subways. I, I mean, I could tell you stories of us like walking through the streets of Paris, not knowing whether we were gonna have a place to stay that night. There's a funny story about uh, when we were in Copenhagen, there was a blues jam going on, and I know this is a little long. So I'm cutting all of this out. Awesome. <laughs> we're in Copenhagen, and we're at this place called Mojo Blues Bar. They were having a jam, and everybody there was trying to play the blues, but it was a bunch of like Danish people trying to play like U.S. blues, and they wouldn't let us play. We're just like, let us play, let us play. And they're like, no, we're booked. And he looks at the guy, and he's like, bro, I'm from Texas. I am the blues. <laughs> and they let us play, and it was great. So, again, Charlie just, he just played. He just played anywhere he could. That's amazing. Hey, we're pumped for the show. Two of the very best Texas Americana, Deep Ellum Blues. We'll see you on the other side. show. I know, What'd y'all think? Awesome. Amazing. Amazing night. I am tired and I'm hungry. I don't we're probably know who still the gonna go. Band was, but they were killer. They were amazing. It was a really, really, really good night. I'm gonna throw it to future Dave and he'll talk about it because he's gonna be more eloquent than I am. <laughs> and we'll see you then. Bye. Why, thank you, past Dave. You guys, last night was so much fun. We hung out with great people. We saw some amazing music. I love that venue. And the friends that we were hanging out with are some of the most creative forces in Dallas right now, and I absolutely love them to death. That conversation with Jonathan was phenomenal, and it reminded me, actually, about a song that David Ramirez wrote. It's called Stone, and you can find it on an EP called Raw. And in it, he says, I get phone calls from fellow musicians. They're all wanting to pick my brain. Should I do this or do that? Which trick from one hat and they get sad when I tell them to just play. If you want to know how to play a venue like the Majestic Theater, the number one piece of advice that I get from people playing those shows now is just play. You can work on sound and image and all of those things, but if you're doing it in a space like this and you never get out of your own world and actually start somewhere, take the small shows, you're never going to get to this level. These are two guys, Charlie and David, who have both done that in spades. I also want to reference something Jonathan said at one point where he mentioned the need to develop what it is you have to say. The second part of that verse by David Ramirez says, you can hire great promotion and get your management all in place, but the one thing I know that will seal you in stone is what you have to say. Unfortunately, I know a lot of phenomenal, talented artists who spend a lot of time playing, a lot of time developing their sound, a lot of time developing their image, and not a lot of time developing their message. No matter what type of creator you are, we got into this because we felt like we had something to say that needed to be heard. So if you want two pieces of advice from what I'm hearing from the guys playing the venues we all wish we were playing, you just gotta get out there and do it for one. You gotta start and you gotta not stop no matter how much adversity you find. The second one is, you have to develop your message because the one thing I know that will seal you in stone is what you have to say. With that, I'm going to throw it back to past Dave because he had a way more fun night than I'm having at the moment and we'll see you guys next week. We saw the show. We got a little nightcap with friends, but we wanted to let the record show that right now everyone else is at home in bed. Serious. And we're the last two standing. I know, my eyes might be closed, but I'm still standing. <laughs>